in our analysis of the stability of um, homogeneous oscillations in the complex Ginzburg-Nanda equation, we found that depending on the parameters B and C, you can have regimes where actually that homogeneous solution is not stable to linear perturbations, which modulate the local phase. And I told you that if you do the calculation with for plane waves, so traveling waves, you find that <clears throat> under these conditions, actually no plane waves, traveling waves, are linearly stable. And so let's see now what happens in regimes like that if you do numerical simulations. So let's start in the regime where, in this Benjamin Fair unstable regime, and just, uh, you know, here you, what you see is the magnitude of the, of the complex amplitude and the real and imaginary parts. And let's just run it um, and see what happens. So you see I applied a small perturbation, so it's, the, the amplitude is not completely constant, the small perturbations, and let's see what happens with those. Um, well, they seem to grow. And now as they grow, you also see that the magnitude starts to be slightly deformed, so to speak. You get modulations in the magnitude. And um, well, maybe the magnitude becomes like a periodic pattern. That could be, right? I mean, it, you have an instability for some modulation and that modulation could lead to a pattern. But you see, actually it's not a, well, there's some modulation, but it just keeps going. So it's now sped up. It keeps going. These, these blips here, they move to the right, they move to the left, they merge, they uh, split, uh, not split, they merge and new ones form. And so when you now look at that in a space-time diagram, so time is going up, space is this way. So this initial phase was done here where the, um, <clears throat> we just had a constant amplitude with small perturbations and these perturbations grew and you, now you see these modulations here. And these modulations then move around, new, new peaks show up, peaks merge, and that just seems to be going on for a long time. And in fact, it seems to go forever if you do long simulations. What's important to note is that the magnitude is always between like 0.85 and 1.05 or something like that. So meaning it's always bounded away from zero. And so we just have waves that are modulated or uh, oscillations are modulated, somewhat modulated, and then modulation just never becomes uh, steady. It just keeps uh, evolving chaotically. So is that all that you can get? Well, no, there's actually more regimes that you can get. So if you, if you look at the Chate, Hugues Chate had uh, published a paper a while back uh, where he analyzed that in, in quite some detail. And so he uses slightly different parameters. Uh, so we, in our calculations, the Benjamin Fair stability was B times C equals minus one. Um, in his notation, uh, the Benjamin Fair stability is this straight line here. And so the plane wave, the waves or homogeneous oscillations are linearly stable down here, and they're unstable above that straight line. And the simulations that we just saw were right here in this, uh, at this point, which he noted or denoted as phase turbulence. So it was a chaotic state or turbulent state, you know, depending on what, how you want to call it. And the action was all in the phase. The amplitude, you know, well, the point of the phase was conserved there were no phase slips, the amplitude was always uh, away from zero. So what happens if you uh, change the parameter B3 to here? So let's look at that simulation, uh, which he labeled uh, amplitude turbulence. Okay, so um, let's see what we get then. So again, a small perturbation initially, and um, the magnitude is almost constant. And uh, again, you see, okay, the modulations become larger. Now you see them also showing up in the magnitude. Um, so far, the oscillations are all sort of synchronous everywhere. Well, aha, uh -huh, maybe, maybe not. Now I actually see here, uh, the way ahead from there, um, this jitter, the, the simulation should actually go smoothly. It seems like when, whenever I put the mouse in the window, the the screen sharing somehow slows things down. So uh, 
the, the simulation is relatively smooth. And now you see actually that the, ma the magnitude actually goes down quite large, strongly, it goes almost to zero. And so now in this sped up version, you see every so often the magnitude dips down to zero. And of course, when the magnitude of a complex variable is uh, zero, it, the phase of that magnitude of that complex variable is not defined. So those are moments when actually you have a phase slip occurring whenever you have these uh, <coughs> the magnitude go down to zero. And so the space-time diagram looks now like that. Again, we have initially this almost homogeneous state, which again develops modulations. But now you see the modulations become much larger, as you saw up here already. Because note that the scale here is from zero to 1.5. So you see that there's locations showing up where <coughs> I marked it with red, where the amplitude goes down below 0.05, the magnitude. And you see there's every so often there's like a red dot. And so that's when you have a phase slip occurring, meaning where the local wave number uh, switches. I mean, you lose one wavelength or you gain a wavelength, one or the other. And this happens now persistently all along, um, all, all uh, along the time. And again, you have these, these uh, crests, which are large amplitude uh, po portions, uh, drift around, I shouldn't say drift, you know, move around and they, well, it's hard to tell what, what really is going on. One would have to really analyze that in detail. Uh, but the, the key point here is that you have here a different regime where you do have phase slips. Whereas in this previous, in this phase turbulent regime, you don't have phase slips. So this regime is called amplitude turbulence because the amplitude plays a very important role. Let's just do one more simulation. Um, so here in Chate's paper, you have that, here's the Benjamin Fair instability. So below that line, uh, the homogeneous state is linearly stable to oscillations, linearly stable. So what happens when you go there? Well, let's pick a parameter down here uh, and see what happens. So plane waves are linearly stable. So if I started with an ho almost homogeneous state, it should stay uh, the same. I mean, it should relax back to homogeneous state. So the initial condition is now different. It's like a pulse here that you saw initially. And um, now you have, um, again, dips in the amplitude, which suggests that there are phase slips occurring. And you have here the wave travels to the left and here the wave travels to the right. So you see there's like sources and sinks, right? Uh, wherever there are sinks, the magnitude has a dip. And wherever there's a source, the magnitude has a peak. And so you have a whole bunch of these sources and sinks. And um, well, at this time scale, we don't quite know whether they're evolve moving a lot or not. Well, now in this faster time scale, we see that these sources and sinks actually move around um, and uh, keep doing that. Well, let's see what the space-time diagram shows, you know, what kind of evolution we see on a long time scale. And you see now that here are these, <clears throat> the, the large amplitudes are the sources, um, and uh, here are the small amplitude guys. So they're essentially drifting with a constant velocity until something happens right here. This drifted with a constant velocity until it hit this maximum in the magnitude and somehow there's a maximum in the amplitude. And so the, the, these sort of merged and the left was only one uh, <clears throat> a source with a large amplitude. And uh, so this seems to be going on also for a long time. We don't know, I mean, from the simulation, we cannot gauge whether this will persist or whether eventually you just get one domain. But um, if you do it long enough, you see that it just keeps going like this, that you have a new domains form like here. You have a formation of this um, <clears throat> low amplitude, this dip, and uh, the large amplitude kind of split. And um, that just keeps going on. So there are additional uh, other states that are seen uh, uh, possible in, in the system. We're not going to discuss them in further. I just want to mention that here, uh, Chate finds that you have, depending on the initial conditions, you can either have phase turbulence or amplitude turbulence in, in this regime. So if you start with very small perturbations, you're likely to stay in the phase turbulent regime, meaning the magnitude stays essentially around one, whereas if you start with a uh, large dips in magnitude, then you would get the amplitude turbulent regime. So that's in 1D. 
And you can also write down the ginsburg landau equation in 2D. And we'll look at that behavior in the next session.